with this we'll start with few of these studies across the, done in india which says yeah this is one of the study which says the prevalence of dental caries in india which says that almost 54.16% of indian population are are suffering with dental caries in which per day we are doing almost 50 Uh, there are almost 15 million rcts that are performed over a year and more than 41000 root canal treatments are performed over every day and about 25 root canal therapies are performed every week by an endodontist so i think every one of us are contributing to those root canals that are performed every day so i think we are making nation more pain free with our root canal therapy so kudos to every one of us right and apart if we see the statistics which says the success rate of the endodontic therapy ranges from 86% to 98% which is a wide range and also we cannot ne neglect the fact that we have a 20 percentage of failure in it right so moving the first and important step so whenever we start a root canal therapy or when we see a radiograph the moment we see a radiograph we think that seeing our obturation yes i have done a great i uh, think great root canal therapy so initially we think if you have done a void free uh, obturation we think that okay we have done a great root canal and sometimes later we'll think that okay maybe i could have done uh, my bmp much more better or my irrigation much more better so that my radial canals will be filled i think maybe i have to you know uh, if we do the bmp correct we'll get a great root canal output so let me surprise you and tell you that your axis cavity is the first and foremost and crucial step for your root canal success the moment you do your axis opening perfectly your post endodontic post endodontic restoration will also be more more uh, more uh, failure free and you will have more success rate imagine you are making a wonderful endo or wonderful uh, obturation and you missed a canal because you haven't made a full axis then it's a failure right and imagine you have done a big axis cavity and you went through the perforation then it's a failure so you have to know where exactly you have to stop your axis opening and where you have to extend your axis opening so your axis opening makes a huge difference in the entire endodontic therapy base and most important uh, treatment where your bmp and obturation right so here to tell you what is enamel here or what is dentin here so let me tell you about the pulp chamber anatomy okay the roof of the pulp chamber i i want you to concentrate more because the roof which is made out of dentin plays an important role while making an axis cavity right so whenever you are making an axis cavity you will go through this enamel dentin and doctor can you able to hear me Uh, i think we have lost you in between doctor yeah i yeah, am so sorry yeah that's okay think before so yeah so if you see the pulp chamber anatomy this is your roof of the pulp chamber and this is your floor of the pulp oh, chamber you can see nothing screen share Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm able to see the screen now. Doctor. Yeah, yeah. So if you see the, we know the anatomy of like enamel, dentin, and pulp. So let me tell you the anatomy of the pulp. Okay, and I, the pulp has a roof and a floor, 
and whenever you're doing your axis cavity, the area that you touch is just your roof, not the walls of the pulp or the floor of the pulp. From your floor of the pulp, you will have your canals. So this area should always be untouched with your axis cavity opening burrs, okay? What you do with your axis cavity burrs is you will just remove the floor roof of the pulp, but you will never touch the floor of the pulp, okay? And this entire space is a hollow space. Because that's the reason why the moment you go down, you feel that drop is because the entire pulp cavity, pulp chamber is a hollow space. And there is nothing you can do with your burrs inside. Rather, you can do with your irrigation systems, right? So the, there are foremost objectives, how you have to go start your root canal therapy. And the first and more important step is excavate entire carious lesion. This is the primary most important step. You have to excavate the entire caries, no matter how, how, how extended the caries is. Madam, the entire, entire tooth is having caries. What should I do? Should I do only axis cavity where towards only the mesial side? No. You have to excavate the entire caries wherever the caries lesion is present. So you, you can have a benefit by doing is that the moment you excavate the caries, you will end up in the pulp. So uh, ex extrally, you cannot keep any effort and then check and tell that, okay, I have done something else. You shouldn't leave caries here and do, do your uh, uh, axis cavity here. You have to entirely remove the caries so that the caries itself will lead you to the axis cavity. Understand? And also, sometimes what happens, you'll expect that all the cavities towards our mesial side. But sometimes the axis cavity will be entirely towards your distal side. You will be still searching towards your mesial side. My mesobuccal canal should be towards my meso, uh, mesobuccal cusp. So I'll be searching there. No, sometimes the entire canal will be shifted to, towards your distal side. Then you will mi miss everything. So whether the caries is present towards your distal side or towards your mesial side, start excavating the caries. This also gives you an idea whether what kind of post anontic restoration you can go ahead. The moment you excavate the caries and no wall is left, then, then uh, no matter how good endo you do and you cannot keep a crown on it, then it is a failure. So the first and foremost important objective or your goal should be remove the entire caries lesion from the cavity, right? So if you see here, I have removed the entire caries lesion here. The moment I have, I have removed here, then I had seen that is a she shape. So I didn't keep any effort that whether it was a she shape before I didn't take a CBCT. The moment I have removed the caries here, I could see the canals like this clearly. And with my dentinal map and everything is like clear to me. There is no, uh, no fuss or anything, whether where is the canal. I didn't search anywhere because the moment I have removed my caries lesion, I could see all the canals here. Right. So the first and important step is to remove all your caries lesion. Right. And the second is de-roofing the pulp chamber and removing all the pulpal content. Never ever. So this is my pulp horns. So this is my carious lesion. I will start taking out my carious lesion and I will extend my cavity only to the roof of the pulp, but never ever touching my floor of the pulp. The moment I de-roof, I remove the carious lesion, I could see like this. So this is all the space that I have, that is available and this is the uh, floor of the pulp chamber where I can see my dentinal map. If you follow your dentinal map, it will lead you that, yes, it is in the center. There are two canals here and there is a two canal here. I never touched here. I didn't make any indentations in my uh, floor of the pulp. It is all, I have just removed the roof of the pulp and removed entire the pulpal uh, contents from the coronal pulp. That's it. You can, you will be able to see what is left over is your floor of the pulp and you can see the canals and you can, and you can go ahead. So the second important step is de-roofing means entirely de-roofing your pulp. De-roofing. I cannot make just a, okay, I have entered the pulp from here. I will do my BMP. No, you have to de-roof the entire pulpal chamber. And then only you will have a straight line access to your uh, pulpal canals. If you see this, even this, here is the uh, caries extension. So I have removed the caries. The moment I removed the caries, I could see here. 
which is very evident the and my dentinal map is telling yes there are two canals here this is the maxillary first molar so here also i can see all the canals clearly now what i did, what i have done is i have made a straight line axis so there is no need for me to bending my canal bending my files the moment i bend my files you will have a tension created in your files and then you will end up in separating your files so make sure you are having a straight line axis whether you have 100 canals but every canal should have a straight line axis that is like a mandatory thing so that will reduce you from uh, going to any type of errors that might happen in your uh, BMP. So in this case also, I have removed the entire entire carious lesion and I have de-roofed the pulp. And this is how I can see. And now the main question that people ask me, which what kind of burst should we do? Because some textbook says that, yes, you have to use your GG drills to pre-flare uh, pre and then you use your Muller burst, you use your Moon's burst. I think you have seen all those kind of burst and uh, things that are available. But let me tell you, yes, your basic burst, that is your endo axis burst and endo Z burst. These are the key that you can use in these two can do miracles. Trust me, this bar come, this endo axis bar comes with 21 mm. However, with the marking diamond points are present only for 9 to 10 mm. And with this bar, you can you can this bar alone can be sufficient, but you are scared initially, then just follow your endo Z bar, which is a non-cutting tip bar. It will avoid many perforations that can happen in your clinical practice. So initially, whenever you're starting, make sure you start with your endo axis bar and then move to your endo Z bar. Ma'am, still I have pulpal uh, calcifications or pulpal stones. What, what else should I use? Should I use GG? No. Immediately shift towards your ultrasonics. These ultrasonics will help you more better than your GG drills or moon's burst or anything. Ultrasonics will help you to negotiate any extra canal that, ha that you have missed or uh, any pulp stones that have occurred or any, any other anatomy that you have missed. Your ultrasonics will help you, right? And further, okay, I'm unable to see, then use microscopes. Ma'am, can we, without microscopes, can we do endo? Yes, you can definitely do endo even without microscopes. You just need your eyes to see and you just need to know the basic anatomy of your uh, root canals so as to do an endo, right? And next, if you are missing still, then you can, these are all the aids, but these are not the basic things that you need. The basic things you need was an endo axis bar and an endo zebra. These are all extra accessories that you need. If you cannot do a perform or you in doubt, you can go for a CBCT. And if you can, if you're in a doubt, I think there is an MB2 and an MB3, then you can go for a CBCT. If not, these are just adjuncts to uh, you know, enhance your practice, but these are not the basic things. The basic thing is to have an endo axis bar and endo zebra, right? And before anything else, your teeth, the moment you know your teeth anatomy, you will be like easily operating everything, okay? You should know the basic anatomy of your teeth and where exactly, uh, where exactly the canals will be located. That will guide you very, very easily so you don't need anything else. So the moment if you see these are your maxillary teeth, right? All the time, your anteriors and everything, your maxillaries, you will have towards your palatal side or towards your lingual side. That's how we operate. Okay. So let me tell me, let me tell you about the molars and premolars. Premolars also, it's easy. You'll go in the center. But what happens in your molars? Always remember, most of your canals are located towards your mes. Side. If you remember when we are in a clinical practice of second year, they used to tell, okay, they never break your oblique ridge because it is the strongest thing that gives you strength while mastigating. So never break an oblique ridge. Yes, true. Even in your axis opening, you will never touch the oblique ridge. Always your canals will be either towards your mes mesial side of the oblique ridge. So whenever you want to search for, never go beyond the oblique ridge and search for your canals. It is always mesially towards your oblique ridge where you can find any number of uh, canals. Sometimes, maybe 5%, 95% of the times it is towards your mesial sites, but sometimes maybe that 5% distal side of your oblique ridge, but not below your oblique ridge. 
okay yes the tooth always surprises us sometimes it gives you uh, know not all the tooth are the same but mostly whenever you want to do for your upper molars it is towards your mesial side of the oblique ridge right and if you come to the lower molars also from your midpoint towards the mesial side never on towards your uh, distal cusps no if you if you are in a initial stage then go to the midpoint and then extend the cavity towards your mesial side that is how you will find your mesobuccal under meso uh, mesobuccal canal under the mesobuccal cusp and mesolingual canal under the mesolingual cusp and your distal at the midpoint 